Hello, come on in. I'm Patrick Verone, co-executive producer and writer of Futurama. We're here in trailer 795 of the 20th Century Fox lot in West Los Angeles. Welcome to the writer's room of tomorrow. Not only is this the room where we write Futurama, but this is the room where I give tours of the room where we write Futurama. It's filled with art, with science, with all the many distractions that keep us from writing Futurama. Let's start by pointing out the wall cards that circumnavigate the ceiling all the way around the room, depicting each of the 140 episodes of Futurama. It shows the title of the episode, the number, the date it originally aired, the writer of the episode and the director, if there was a guest voiceover star, and if it was nominated for an award or if it won one. This is the north wall of the Futurama writer's room. It features black light posters and a whiteboard that uh, the writers will sometimes use to concoct jokes or mathematical theorems, like this one, Keeler's Theorem, named after Dr. Ken Keeler, who devised it for the episode that he wrote uh, called The Prisoner of Benda, episode 610, which is uh, from the sixth season of the show, but available only on volume five of the DVDs. This is not the entire theorem. If you need to see the entire theorem, you're gonna have to buy that DVD and watch that episode. But you can enjoy what's here now. Had enough? Let's go on to the next wall. Here's the east wall. For time immemorial, calendars have told us something we already knew. You have to know what the date is and merely have the calendar confirm it when you look at it. This calendar, designed by Dr. Keeler, does much more. Not only does it have all these lovely multicolored post-its signifying the date of a table read or a color or animatic screening, a record or an air date, but it also signifies when Green Shirt Day is, the third Thursday of every month. Beyond that, it does much, much more, thanks to an array of 300 blue LEDs powered by this Arduino motherboard. But don't take my word for it. Let me show you by turning out the lights. The calendar is made up of six foam core boards. The total width is 11 feet. The total height is three and a half feet. So we have a nice cleansing wipe of 12 different 5 by 5 arrays of blue LEDs. This will then be followed by something else of interest. Well, here's the, uh, here's the time. 1, 24, 06, 07, 08. Yes, that's, that's the time. It was designed entirely in the room by Ken Keeler using the expertise he learned while working writing code for submarines. A good use of the PhD he earned from Harvard. Now what it's showing us is today's date and a series of lights heading into the next time there's a table read, which as the days got closer would always add a nice dollop of stress onto our daily existence. And uh oh, well, this may be a sign that we should uh, turn on the lights and uh, move on to the next wall. So that's the calendar that takes up all the space on the east wall. Let's see what takes up space on the south wall. Why, it's Futurama executive producer and head writer, David X. Cohen. Thanks, Patrick. Now listen, uh, Patrick's told you quite a bit about all the fun stuff that he and Ken plastered all over the north and east walls. But the south wall is the business wall. This being the Futurama writer's room, our business is writing. Starts in this room, sitting around this table with about five to seven writers. We start with a story idea. Sometimes a writer brings it in. Sometimes we come up with it here on the fly. And we then begin working through the main points of the plot, writing them down on index cards, such as this one here. When I feel that the whole story makes sense, that it's maybe sort of funny, one of the writers takes it, goes home, works on an outline, we talk about it some more, and subsequently they come in with a first draft. It really looks like a script, something like this. That's when the real work of being a Futurama writer begins, because we're not really writers, we are rewriters 99% of the time. We're rewriting a script that's already written. We have what we call the dual monitor system, which you'll see right here behind me. 
You know, back in the old days of TV writing, 50, 100, 200 years ago, they had only one monitor back in those primitive times. We have two monitors, got the script up on the screen. We're really just combing through it, looking at every line, trying to make it funnier, trying to make the story make more sense. And we're basically living here together. We're kind of like college roommates, and so all this stuff accumulates. There's a lot more food on the table. It's, it gets kind of smelly in here. You get the idea. We know each other very well after years of doing this together. And helping us along in this process is a writer's assistant who we have uh, shoved over in the corner here. This is Neil. Hello, Neil. There he is. That's Neil. He's typing in the changes. Making That's enough. You can go back down. He's typing in all the changes, making the uh, corrections as we go. Get to the end of the script. And you would think we're done at that point, but no because this is an animated show. It's gonna come back to haunt us. First, about three months later in sort of a pencil test form we call the animatic. Then six months after that in color animation. And this is where our dual monitor system comes into play. Now, as executive producer, one of my main tasks is to work the remote controls. I pick up this one here. I turn around, I change the input on the monitor. And voila, voila, we've got animation running on one monitor the script's still up on the other monitor, and thus the two monitor system. So we can look at what we have, make the last minute changes, final corrections to the show at this stage, get all the way through the script, everything's perfect, hand it in, and then we really are done. So now I'll turn things back over to Patrick Verone. He'll tell you about some more of the fun stuff over here. Patrick, it's all yours. I'm over here now. Some of the things on the south wall that I want to point out, well, really the only things I want to point out are some fan art produced by a gentleman named Warren Rush, who sent us a maquette of Roberto. He also made this model of Hedonism Bot. He made a lovely Crushinator figure, which we keep down there. And last but not least, in its own fake packaging, you can't buy this in stores, you have to get it sent to you by Warren Rush, as we did, the Borax Kid. We keep this on display on the business wall because it reminds us, it humbles us as writers that we really only have one fan who cares enough about us to make these things. Um, let's move on now to the west wall, the final wall, and some people think the best wall. I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit because I can tell you're losing interest. Here's the window that we sometimes look out of where we can see the office that houses the writing staff of New Girl, Homeland, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Here's a, a bookshelf that contains several things, one of which is the compact Oxford English Dictionary. All the uh, words used on Futurama can be found in this 20 volume dictionary that's been reduced to one volume. Come take a look at how small the type is we use a looking glass or magnifying glass so that we can read what they say. Hey, I didn't know that's what that word meant. Well, it does. I'm gonna put it back here because I don't want it to knock over this uh, collection of figurines. These are the presidents of the United States uh, as produced by the Marx Toy Company in the 1970s, a company that went out of business, even though I collected these as a kid, and uh, they stopped making them at Richard Nixon, so I made the rest of them. Uh, I also made this, uh, Earth President Richard Nixon figurine. It's Nixon's head in a jar, held up by the headless clone of Spiro Agnew. Here's the cover of Crack Magazine featuring Futurama. And here's a, a cork board that uh, contains a number of things. One is this set of cards. Whenever somebody, a writer in the room, says something funny or interesting or memorable, uh, someone will say, write it down and put it up on the board. And sometimes somebody does. And when they have, here, here they are. David Cohen said, maybe it's funny to see both of our monkeys on December 23rd, 2011. <laughs> Uh, other things. Let's see, there's uh, this script cover that Matt Groening drew called Futurella from the episode Irreconcilable Differences. This is the actual envelope that said that Futurama won the Emmy. Um, here's a picture that somebody's kid drew of the characters. That's a picture that Homer Groening's kid, Matt Groening, drew of the giant as featured in Benderama. The voice of Pat Oswalt was used in, uh, in recording that giant. I'm gonna cut in front of you here so that I can point out some of these cards, which were ideas for jokes and, and plots that we never uh, got around to doing. Uh, for example, Mobius Strip Club, never-ending nudity, infinite drink minimum. 
And here we have the PS de Resistance, the only known 3D printer in captivity in any writer's room in Hollywood. It's a MakerBot replicator, which uh, extrudes hot plastic at 400 degrees Fahrenheit in layers of uh, 100 microns, one-tenth of a millimeter thick, to build such items as these nested dodecahedra. This uh, hypnotoad. Here's a bender head. Here's my head. This is actually the second 3D printer that we've had in the Futurama rewrite room. The first one was a MakerBot Thingomatic. The inspiration for the Makeomatic that appeared in this season's 40% Lead Belly episode written by Ken Keeler. That machine, we bought it as a kit from MakerBot. Ken and I put it together over a series of lunches uh, over about a month. And the first thing we ever printed out, there's our first extrusion, the first plastic we ever extruded in this room, first plastic we ever extruded. And then here's the first item we ever built. <laughs> a working whistle. I'm gonna give you a very special treat, folks. I'm gonna print this bender. This uh, file here comes to us from Rough Draft Studios, the animators of Futurama. It's an actual 3D uh, wire mesh image of bender. And if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna take my little laptop here, sit here, and press build, and we're gonna see a bender built. support material like that and we have a fully functioning bending unit but it's not complete until we get it signed by Futurama creator Matt Groening. Hey Matt wake up sign this for me would you? Yeah I'd be glad to let's see oh oh I broke the arm off oh well if I sign it it'll still be worth something. Make it out to eBay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's see. I usually sign his shiny metal asses. Okay. Now, sometimes when people annoy me, I sign my name Mike Green. Okay? But you didn't, so there you go. That's wonderful. Nice and smeared. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this tour of the Futurama Writer's Room. I now return you to your main menu.